Where have all the poppies gone? Long time passing. I read in the news and on my Facebook news feed that poppies are a subject of great controversy in Britain. Some people wear them, some don't. Some excoriate and shame those who don't. As they hold that not wearing the poppy is failing to honor the memory of fallen soldiers. But many who don't wear the poppy are not being forgetful or neglectful. They're being purposeful. They object to politicians selling current and future wars by invoking the memory of the brave. Those who die in battle have already given their all. Is it right to recruit them again to help modern war hawks and arms merchants eager to fight with the blood of a new generation? The poppy has become not just a memorial, but also a weapon. I remember when I was a kid, I used to see lots of poppies on this day in New York, where I grew up. But I don't anymore, not in the U.S., not on this day, and here's why. Today commemorates the day the guns fell silent in the Great War. It was thought at the time that it was the war to end all wars. That didn't happen. Didn't even end all great wars. You have to know now that nobody who lived through it was so pessimistic about the future as to actually call it World War I. They, they weren't expecting a second. They just called it the Great War. But when the world fell into a second Great War, they had to give the first one a number. So now we call it World War I. The armistice went into effect at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. Actually, only some of the guns fell silent. The ceasefire was instituted on the Western Front. Fighting continued on other fronts. But 11-11 is the day that stuck in most European and North American countries. The following year, many, not all, countries began an annual commemoration of Armistice Day. Flashback, three years earlier, 1915, in the thick of the fighting, May 2nd, a Canadian soldier, John McCrae, buries a friend and comrade, Alexis Helmer, who had fallen beside him at the horrific Battle of Ypres in Belgium. That was the battle in which the Germans first used poison gas in warfare. The day after, May 3rd, happens to be my birthday, although that wouldn't happen until decades later, McRae, who was not only a soldier, not only a 41-year-old veteran of the Boer War, but also a physician and poet, composed what has become one of the most quoted poems of the war. In Flanders' fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. And so began the association of the poppy with the dead of the First World War, an association of the dead with continued fighting. The dead throwing the torch to the living, not to give up war, not to establish peace, but to carry on the fight. And so through this famous poem, the dead of one war and their poppies spawn the dead of all wars. Armistice Day, which commemorates peace, becomes Remembrance Day, in which we recruit the dead to inspire the living to continue to fight on. It was an American nurse who first plucked the poppy from the page and began wearing it. And from her, it spread to France, to the UK, to the entire British Empire, now the Commonwealth. In the UK, Remembrance Day was moved from the 11th of November to the nearest Sunday. So in Britain, the poppy controversy peaked last weekend. In Canada, Remembrance Day is still today, the 11th of November. But what about the US? Well, the US already had a day of remembrance, older than World War I. Ours goes back to the Civil War. We mark it at the end of May. We call it Memorial Day now, but it started as Decoration Day. People would visit the graves of Union soldiers and decorate them. That custom was started by freed slaves in Charleston. No question that in its origin, it was definitely an expression of gratitude for the sacrifice of the fallen. And then the dead of the Confederacy as well, and now the dead of all wars. When I was a kid, we still had these two days, Decoration Day in May, Armistice Day in November, both about war and remembrance, both seemed to be about the dead, seemed a little redundant. So we've separated them now. Decoration Day morphed into Memorial Day, naming it not for the activity of decorating graves, but for its essence, memorializing the fallen. Congress made the name change official in 1967. Our Memorial Day, which comes in May, is our equivalent to Canada's and Britain's and other countries' Remembrance Day, which comes in November. As for our November commemoration, in the U.S., it's no longer Armistice Day. After World War II, it seemed hollow to commemorate that armistice. The piece of World War I contained inside it the seeds of World War II. Over 60 million people, soldiers and civilians, died in that war. And it was just two decades after the guns fell silent on Armistice Day in 1918. Some armistice. Indeed, the seeds of the current Middle East turmoil were also sown in the First World War, 
when Britain and France imposed artificial colonial boundaries on that region. Some armistice. After World War II in this country, there was a move to change Armistice Day to Veterans Day. And it was in 1954 that Congress officially did that. So now it's Veterans Day, and the focus is no longer on the past, but to living veterans today. Today's a day to thank veterans for their service, to campaign for better treatment of veterans, both physically and mentally. And in the light of that, memorial poppies are completely inappropriate to this day in this country. It's about the living. You still see poppies on that other holiday, Memorial Day, but they're no longer associated with Veterans Day. And that's where all the poppies have gone. Until next time, I'm Mikola. DVD extras. Writing is rewriting. McRae's original draft said prosaically, In Flanders' field where poppies grow. By the time of publication, that became the more poetic and evocative In Flanders' fields where poppies blow. There was a move in the 60s to move federal holidays from their actual calendar day to the nearest Monday so to create three-day weekends for us. That law went into effect in 1971. Washington's birthday became a floater, now called President's Day, along with Columbus Day, Memorial Day, and Veterans Day. But the association of 1111, the armistice of World War I, proved too strong, and in 1978, Veterans Day was cut loose from the always-on-Monday rule, restored to its original place in the calendar where it remains. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. I'm not going to point you to any of my videos today. Instead, that's Pete Seeger singing the song that inspired the title of this video. And here, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Same song, bigger hit. And here, singing in German, Joan Baez. Same song. And finally, the best of them all. A woman who lived through both world wars, Marlene Dietrich. Bye now.